Hello there, everybody! So, Butter Night Dragon Air, and welcome back to Veta Morgana, or rather, the house in Veta Morgana. Now then, um, <clears throat> well, in the last episode, we actually met, uh, Gangster Tagami, and, um, his cohorts, Hoishi and Hideyoshi. Okay, just gonna throw that out there, Jacopo's a dick. So, let's just jump right in here and just see how much of an asshole he is. Because Lord knows he is. Oh, okay. This is something that actually happened to another maid. She heard a sound in the middle of the night. A sound like dripping water. At first she thought it was raining, so she looked through the window, and there wasn't a cloud in the sky to cover the stars. Maybe it's a faucet, she thought. So she stepped out of her room and into the corridor. Compared to her room, it was unearthly chilly. The maid regretted not bringing something to cover herself with. But that didn't make any sense. Normally, the temperature wasn't that much colder outside her room. Her night clothes had always been more than enough for a trip to the lavatory. Or lavatory. Wondering what the reason could be, she made her way toward the sound, but then she realized something. There were no faucets in the direction she was going. Rather, she was headed toward a hall. The mansion where she had served had many halls, but this one was off in a corner of the house. A far corner of the house. The least used hall of them all. It had a high roof, but not a lot of space, so it was difficult to make good use of. It also had a somewhat heavy air to it. A very curious room. It was the kind of place you might assign someone to clean as part of their hazing. Anyway, when the maid realized the sound was coming from that particular hall, she, as you might expect, let out an uncomfortable sigh. But there might be a leak, and having noticed, she couldn't simply ignore it, you know? So, as much as she hesitated, she pushed open the doors to the hall. And there was nobody there. And it didn't look like anything was leaking, either. There were no puddles or water stains anywhere to be found. But she could still hear the sound. Drip. Drip. Getting louder and louder. Slowly stepping further into the room, looking left, then right, then left again, she searched for the source of the sound, coming to a stop in the center of the hall. She stood there still. Quiet. And then... A chilly spot on the nape of her neck. With a little yelp, she reached back to feel her neck. But it wasn't wet. Confused, she slowly, warily, tilted her head backward. Oh God! And there hung a bloody skeleton from the ceiling. That's rich! Amazing! Oh my god, you scream like a little girl! M Maria! You, you little... My god, are you men or children? This is my house and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. <laughs> Whose words were those again? Sh shut your mouth! How do you know about that? Were you eavesdropping? And another thing, I do not care for the sort of stupid fantastical tales you women love so love to pass around. Because they scare you. <laughs> You've never been able to handle anything scary, Jap Jacopo. <laughs> Whoa! Don't glare at me like that. You're gonna destroy my sides. <laughs> so, did you come here for the sole purpose of telling me that cheap tripe? Acting tough like the fact that just makes you look like twice as much of a wuss. I mean, I did make up a good half of it, but the maid really did hear a sound in the middle of the night. And it came from the back hall of this very mansion. Did you know they say it used to be a chapel? Again, I have no interest in you women's little ghost stories. Is that so? You sure you're not just scared? Moria! Well, that said, the room was not completely unfounded. This is a pretty old mansion, and it's had a lot of work done on it. It feels like it's barely holding itself together. Like a big old quilt with pieces from all different time periods. The back hall is one of the oldest patches. There's a huge window on the far end and supposedly there used to be steamed glass in it. It has a depiction of an archangel, they say. Such a shame. I wonder when it was broken. 
<laughs> if it were still there, I'd, I'd bet it'd be worth a fortune. I find that hard to believe. First of all, why would anyone put a chapel inside a mansion? You've got a point, I guess. Now how about you do some actual work instead of distracting yourself with all this nonsense? I do work. But... Eh. The other maids can be a bit... nasty, you know? Dealing with other women is like walking on glass. Am I to blame for that? What if I said you were? <laughs> Don't give me that look. They're just not fond of me. Simple as that. Nothing can do about it. Is that so? Oh yeah, I was talking to the madame and she was telling me you used to be quite the gentleman. Were you perhaps actually in love back then? You sure don't act like it, so it's easy to miss. But I guess you're not made entirely out of steel. Just like when you were younger, you're still... Do not speak of that. The past is not worth remembering. It is unnecessary. So to you, the past exists just to be cast aside. I... Eh, it's not important. You don't want me to talk about it. I won't talk about it. But your wife... Never mind. I'll leave you be. I have to get back to work soon, so... Or I'll be staring down the headmaid's arctic smile. Uh, Alright. If the fancy strikes me, I'll drop by and we can trade more ghost stories. Maria... Hmm? What? No ghost stories? No, not that. I have not forgotten those days. But, no, it's... I'll be off then. What the fuck? Alright. If the fancy strikes you, drop by and we can trade something other than ghost stories. <laughs> What'd I tell you? I'll consider it. Goodbye. What the hell? Whoa! God damn it. I can't escape anything. What the fuck? Ah, they have grown to be so beautiful. Such a wonderful fragrance. The scent of roses is so calming. I wonder why that is. Would it cause any trouble if I picked one? Well, hello there. Out for a midnight stroll, are you? Quite the peculiar hobby, madame. Uh, um, I cannot spend as much time as I would like outside during the uh, day, so I ended up coming out at night. I apologize if I startled you. Oh no, not at all. And there's a chilling, captivating beauty to the sight of your snow-white hair forming form standing there in the moonlit garden. I would hardly... Um... What are you doing out so late? I saw a figure through the window. On the sly chance it might be a burglar, I thought it might... I thought it my responsibility to ensure they did not break in. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into their safe. News of that spread quite far. I am sure you would have heard about it. Oh, but Gamesh was in prison some time ago. Dear me. I cannot seem to get my head out of the past. Uh, um... Do you intend to give that white rose to someone? It, yes. I was thinking about giving it to my husband. While I expect he has little fondness for such feminine tastes, the scent of flowers has a truly calming effect. He might find it relaxing when he needs a reprieve from his work. This is getting some crazy parallels to... Wow. <clears throat> well, if it turns red, we're getting some serious parallels. My god. Hmm. Oh. Is that so? You are very kind-hearted. Speaking of white roses, the rose he meant to give you was the same shade of white. Oh, he? But when you touched it, it turned a deep shade of red. Oh! Yeah, I remember that. Getting some heavy parallels here. There was but a single white rose in the garden, so he was unable to give it to you as he had wished. In its place, he had a decorative rose fashioned for you. Uh, um, what exactly are you referring to? 
Oh dear, do you not remember? Then am I to assume you have forgotten what happened to the rose accessory as well? He was unable to give that to you either. But that time, because you rejected the gift. I'm not criticizing you for that decision, of course. You had a perfectly good reason for not accepting it. Heartbroken from having lost you, he buried the rose in his garden. Over the years, the roses in the garden withered away, and in their place grew a thick, unsightly nest of weeds. Many, many years later, that accessory was dug up by a beast, and curiously enough, it had not a speck of rust on it. A beast? You do not remember him either? The, f the foreign man, who, through his interaction with you, almost regained his humanity. I... I'm sorry. I have no idea what you speak of. The only gift I've ever received from a man is my fennec fennicus wheel. And furthermore, I've only lived in this mansion for a year. While the garden was not as thriving as it is now, it was certainly not in ruins when I arrived. Hmm. <clears throat> this is interesting. She's actually uh, really just referring to the previous doors. Because I had been taken care of it, yes. But for whatever reason, by my hands alone, I was unable to make it into anything quite as splendid as it is now. Once you arrived and began to work on it, however, just look around. You have restored it to its former glory. To the magnificence of the flakes and haired family's na time. I promise I am not trying to fault you for anything. Now that I think about it, it makes sense you would not remember. Though you are still you, you are different than before. Different, though not in the sense you are a wholly distinct person. Tell me, is your name... again? My name is... yes, but you should already know that. Again? More proof that you are indeed you. Did you know that your current name is pronounced the same as the name of the person you're waiting for? What are you talking about? I have met you many times, and I know of your past. Of events that transpired long, long ago. Uh, um, I... I I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I first came to this mansion just a year ago. Until then, I had never left my country, or even set foot out of my own house. We did not have any servants, either. So, where, then, are you saying we met? This mansion, of course. B but I... I'm telling the truth. It was a year ago, shortly after my parents fell ill and received an offer for my marriage. I knew something had to be done. I knew it, and so I... So I... I'm telling the truth. If that is what you remember, then I do not doubt you. But I also suspect I know why you seem so flustered. Are there moments when your memories seem hazy? When it seems like important details have fallen through the cracks? You needn't fret. One day, eventually, you shall remember all. One day. What the fuck? What the hell is this? A white rose. <clears throat> Did she leave this here? A flower. What does she think she's doing? Is she trying to aggravate me? That garden. That damn rose garden is the whole problem. Flowers serve no purpose but to deceive. That garden is a sign of weakness. It has no place in this house. Christ, Jacobo, fuck you! Approximately a week had passed since then. The white-haired girl was, as usual, spending her time in her room reading, staying inside the house. Then Maria barged in. Madam! Madam! Oh my, you're out of breath. What happened? What happened is we have a big problem! The, the, the garden! The rose garden! The garden? The, all the roses you put so much love and care into growing are being chopped down! We'll lose them all if we don't hurry! Ugh, Jacopo, you fucking idiot! Upon hearing the news, the white-haired girl dashed from her room and toward the garden, with Maria following in close behind. When she arrived, she saw a dozen or so sweaty, rugged men at work, Jacopo, shouting orders. The men clearly had no concept of how much a single flower was worth, no concern whatsoever for their beauty. 
for they mercilessly, thoughtlessly hacked away the shrubs like they were naught but weeds. Each flower they tore from the earth extinguished another of the many lives the white-haired girl put so much time and effort into tending for. Jacopo! What are you- Oh, hello, Maria. I didn't expect you would come with her. Why would you do- Why? Why, it goes without saying. This house has no need of a garden. Damn flowers have no place here. Might as well do something worthwhile with the soil. A miniature railroad would be a better use of the space and certainly a great deal easier on the eyes. I could even get my hands on some genuine wheels. The same wheels being used on the revolutionary transcontinental railroad. Ten or twenty years down the line, they'll be worth a fortune. D Jacopo! You know how much this garden meant to me, don't you? Did it honestly have no place here? Flowers have a calming effect on people. They give you peace. But they are not by any means worthless. So you're saying that White Rose was your passive-aggressive way of telling me to calm down? Not at all! I simply thought you... At the end of the day, you're just using them for your own purposes, to trick and deceive. To, th to you, this Rose Garden was nothing but... Jacopo! You've gone too far, this isn't right! <laughs> gone too far? This is my mansion. What I do with my property is my business, and let's snap your fucking neck. With that rose ache out of the picture, we'll have a much better view. Rose art, my apologies. There won't be anything blocking the sun any longer. Weren't you supposed to be sensitive to the sunlight? Spend too much time out here and you're liable to fall ill. Get back inside now. Oh fuck. I'm starting to get sick just trying to voice this guy. Get back inside now. You too, Maria. You're a dick. The poor thing, though she did not say a word, was surely thinking. Are you truly that determined to rob me of my sanctuary? The words twirled around in your head, unable to make the final journey to her lips. She stood there, looking down at her own feet as her husband marched off, and listened to the screams of the roses being reaped. Fuck. After being torn down by Jacopo, the garden reverted to a state of ruined desolation. A shame, after all the work that went into restoring it to the beauty it had under the Flakes and Head family. And as Jacopo had said, in its place went scraps of metal, train wheels, prototype models, carbon rods. These items may have had value for him, but I certainly do not, do not think it was worth robbing his wife of a place that made her feel comfortable just so he could restore them there. Besides, I was rather fond of the Rose Garden myself. The roses seemed to evoke a sense of nostalgia in me. I felt as though somewhere far beyond the edge of my memories, I had seen another garden of roses, modest though it may have been. But I cannot remember when it was. Does that come as a surprise to you? Not really. I'm quite sure that there are periods of the mansion's history of which I am not aware. But in any case, Jacopo had caused many people great pain in order to repurpose that garden for himself. And he continued to walk all over his wife. Whenever she tried to do something kind for him, he would brush her off saying, That's not your place. He paid no mind whatsoever to the looks of dejection that rose to her face each time he rejected her. I was beginning to wonder if anything she had said about the man he had been a year earlier was actually true. And if it was true, could a person really go through such a drastic change of heart in such a short time? What do you think, Master? I? No. <clears throat> I have spoken enough about me already. I seem to be talking a lot about myself this time. But that is hardly appropriate behavior for a maid. Now, let us return to our tale. That evening, the white-haired girl sat in a room staring sorrowfully at her finicus wheel. A small mirror before her, she tried spinning the paper disc, but it was just not the same as before. Her husband was not there at her side, and even more critically, there was not a smile on her face. And then she heard a faint knock on her door. Who is it? It's me, madam. It's me. May I come in? Oh. Maria, of course, come in. What are you doing here at this time of night? <laughs> I was just wondering how you were doing. Should I have left you alone? No, oh, it's no trouble at all. I'm always glad to have you. <laughs> You're making me blush, madam. I got the feeling you were a little down in the dumps. So I'm not here because I need to be. I'm just... 
I kind of, just kind of ended up here, I guess. Maria. Sorry, I'm not making any sense. I can be a bit of a busybody, you know? Trouble with boundaries, I guess. Never been able to fix that. N no, no, I don't consider you intrusive at all. I cannot count how many times your bright smile and cheerful energy have shown a light on me when things were dark. If I didn't have you, I would have given up already. You seem to see right through me. Even now, you are exactly right. I'm feeling a little dispirited. That garden was an even bigger life raft than I thought. Perhaps I'm being overly dramatic, but the roses were almost like children to me. I get it. I do. You put your heart and soul into tending that garden. It was obvious how much you loved them. Of course it's gonna hurt watching a bunch of men step all over your flowers when you cared for them like your own children. Now, I know I said this once already, but you don't need to force yourself to put up with him, really. You don't have to bend to his will just because you're a woman. You can survive without him. Anytime you want to walk away, that's your choice. I mean, I'm sh I I'd sure be lonely if you left, madam. But your happiness is more important than any of that. So, you know... Thank you, Maria. I truly do appreciate it. But I... I would still like to wait for the day I can see his warm smile once more. Jesus. If you say so. Well, in that case, guess I'll just have to be there to back you up. It'll, it'll be alright. You leave everything to this holy virgin. I'll have a stupid grin on my face no matter how down you're feeling. <laughs> you really are the reincarnation of the Mother of God, aren't you? Oh, you. I told you. It's just a joke. Eh, whatever. So, hey, madam. How about a dance? Huh? Okay. Not that I'm opposed to that. A dance? At this time of night? Yep, and since it's so late, no loud music. All I get is a little whistling courtesy of me. But, but, but this room is too small for... We'll use the Great Hall. Wouldn't that put us in everyone else's way? You'd yeah, probably complain about the noise, too. No need to worry. Jacopo's out inspecting some factory or something today. After that, he's got a meeting, so he'll be staying the night elsewhere. The rest of the maids are in their rooms chatting away. No one will notice. Where I come from, we dance all the time. We take eat, drink, and be merry to heart. Ireland? No food or drink for us, but we absolutely can dance. Oh, okay, somewhere else then. Dancing a great way to forget all your cares. Nothing. I swear I didn't insult people. I, I'm not insulting people from Ireland who can't. I'm, I swear I'm not insulting your dance skills. I swear I deeply apologize. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go forward now. I'm not much of a dancer. No big deal. Nobody's watching. Come on, put a little fancy perfume and let's have some fun. I don't have any perfume, though. Didn't think so. You've got all the right ingredients, madam. But you don't try to make anything special out of them. You've got so much potential, but not even a decent-sized wardrobe. At the very least, you should wear some perfume. Which is why, ta-da, I brought some with me. The maids are in love with this stuff. It's a big hit with women all over the country. The base is vanilla, and it's got several of the fragrances mixed in. Give it a try. It smells divine. But, but Maria, I... Come on, what's the harm? Just a little splash on your wrist like so. What do you think? Huh. You're right, it smells wonderful. Doesn't it? So you like it? Yes, very much so. Excellent. Now off we go to the Great Hall. D are we really going to dance? You bet your butt we are. It's not healthy to hole up in your room all day. I know you can't handle a lot of sunlight, but you still got to have some fun and move your body. Come on, let's go! D oh, Maria. Hmm, that's nice. That's just very nice. Though she looked outwardly uncertain as Maria let her forward, hand around her wrist, the white-haired girl seemed to be enjoying herself. Having spent her life without a single friend, she never dreamed the day would come when she would find herself being dragged through the empty halls of a dark mansion by another woman. Maria's presence seemed to shine a light upon the quiet corridor. It would have been a very lonely trek without her. Maria spun around, gave an impish smirk, and raised her pointer finger to her lips with a soft shush. The sight of it caused the white-haired girl to chuckle quietly. The two of them, on their way to their secret private ball, were like two adolescent girls. In short order, they arrived at the Great Hall. My heart was pounding all the way here. What's there to be nervous about? 
It's not like you're breaking any rules. Only kids get in trouble for staying up late. Once you've grown up, you're responsible for yourself. Well, yeah, but I can't really stay up that late. I still go to bed rather, rather early. <laughs> I will say, though, that it seems rather odd for two women to dance together. Not really. No, oh, wait, I, I, I gotta remember the time period here. Oh, if you're having a good time, why does it matter what's between your legs? <laughs> Okay, I like you, Maria. <laughs> Where I come from, there's dances with families lock arms in a big ring and go around in circles. So who says two girls can't have some fun together? I imagine you had many good moments with your family. Well, I don't have a family anymore. What? Alright, so I'll show you how it's done. Watch carefully, because you're up next. Uh, okay... With a wide grin on her face, Maria began whistling softly and prancing across the floor with an energetic rhythm. It was not the kind of complicated dance you'd see at fancy parties. The motions were simple, flowing, unembellished. A folk dance, I suppose you might call it. She seemed to be improving a little bit as well. But in any event, the white-haired girl was captivated. Captivated, my apologies. Despite it being a sequence of steps anyone could replicate, Maria breathed life into the dance. She was neither as lithe as an acrobatic, nor as light on her feet as a professional dancer. She was her own lively, beautiful self. Maria twirled in place, the skirt of her maid uniform billowing gently up around her. With a smile, she extended her hand toward the white-haired girl. She hesitated for a moment, but as if being pulled forward by some invisible force, she took Maria's hand. Hand in hand, Maria ushered the white-haired girl into her dance. It was just the two of them, but you could almost see the crowd forming around them. The other people stepping up to join in. <clears throat> That's it, madam. Doing great. Now lift your leg up good and spin like so. Th this is not easy, Maria. I'm having trouble following along. You can do it. Looking good so far. You're a natural, madam. Oh, Maria. I won't fall for your flattery. I mean it. The whispers of the two girls, their muffled laughs, step, hop, step, step, the rustling of fabric, many different soft sounds laid atop one another, creating a little bubble of happiness in the center of the hall. The white-haired girl's movements were a great deal clumsier than Maria's, but Maria would never disparage her for that. On the contrary, she showered her praise. As flustered as the white-haired girl appeared, I imagine she was quite pleased. Before long, the tightness in her face muscles loosened, a smile spread across her lips, and she began to brighten up. See, what I tell you? Fun, huh? Yes, I'm quite surprised. Both that I can dance, and that I enjoy doing it so much. <laughs> Glad to hear it. They exchanged looks and both laughed. That night, that might have been the first time I'd ever seen the white-haired girl so delighted. However... Because of her infirmity, she quickly found herself out of breath, her porcelain skin flushed red. Maria immediately stopped for a break. She could surely have continued dancing for some time yet, but Maria was conscientious of the white-haired girl's physical condition. She looked over at Maria regretfully. My apologies. If only I had more stamina. I'm hardly a suitable partner for you, Maria. Sure you are! This is all to cheer you up, madam. So long as you're having fun, nothing else matters. And heck, I'm enjoying myself plenty too. What do you think? Wouldn't it be nice to do this again sometime? Whenever you're feeling down, let's dance. If you if you really do enjoy dancing with a frail girl like me, then I would be glad to. Have a little more confidence in yourself, madam. You're so pretty and kind-hearted. I have loads of fun when I'm with you. So you don't need to be so hard on yourself, got it? Thank you. The pleasure's mine. It is an absolute honor to have the rare opportunity to see such a bright smile on your face, madam. <laughs> my apologies for keeping you out so late. I should get back to my room. Oh, I didn't even realize what time it was. I'm more than up for a little more gum flapping. You have improved my mood more than adequately. I would not want you to be tired for work tomorrow. Ah, okay. Well then, let's get out of here. Yes. Smiles on both of their faces, they made to exit the Great Hall.
However, before they reached the door, it swung open. A man's towering shadow cast the two women into darkness, his cold, bitter glare fixed on them. If I'd had even the faintest premonition this might happen, I would have done anything in my power to stop the two cheery girls on their way to the hall. But I am eternally powerless. What are you doing? Oh, God damn it. Standing before them in the doorways that was the master of the house, Jacopo. Uh, I thought you would not be back until tomorrow. And how would you know that? No, forget that. Does my sting the night elsewhere have any effect on you? You were just waiting for this opportunity, weren't you? N no, what would I possibly want you out of the house for? I'm sure you know better than anyone. What? What is that smell? Perfume? When did you get perfume? And I have to say, you seem to be having quite the time. Look at you. You're out of breath. Red as a beet. I made the right decision coming back. Where the hell were you going? No, I wasn't going. J Jacopo, calm down. Seriously. You shut it. Now you're taking this tramp's side. Did you just... You fucking asshole! I have told you before not to leave this house without first consulting me. Or do you mean to tell me you've forgotten? God, your ears aren't just for show, all right. They're better than that. They'll even throw out the parts you don't want to hear. No, I swear, I was not doing anything you... Silence! I have no interest in your excuses. You're always watching from the shadows, observing, trying not to step on anyone's toes. And in the back of your mind, you're mocking me! N no, I... Listen up and listen good. You just try stepping out of line again. You just try disgracing me again. You will not get away with it! For the love of God, get back to your room now. You too, Maria. T all right. God, what is the sickening sweet, sickeningly sweet smell? How utterly infuriating. It'll take forever to get this off of me. I always thought you had at least some sense of taste. God! Where's Yuki Masa when you need him? I have a target for you! Why did he have to disparage her so? What did she do wrong? What did she do to deserve that? She did nothing whatsoever wrong. She deserved none of the ridicule he showered her with. However, she was not a strong-willed woman. She did not have the courage to retort to the man yelling at her. And neither did Maria, it seemed. Without another word, they both scrambled out of the Great Hall, away from Jacopo. The white-haired girl was a painfully miserable sight to behold. The cheer had drained from her spirit, and the rosy hue from her now pale cheeks. She was hunched forward slightly, looking like a small, sacred animal. Sick, scared animal, my apologies. Say, uh, I'm sorry. This is all my fault. If I hadn't asked you to dance, and me bringing the perfume only made things worse. No, you need not feel bad about anything, Maria. Everything you did was with my best interests at heart. So, don't worry. I will be fine. God. Um, so, madam, I'll clear everything up. I, I really am to blame, after all. He wouldn't even give you the time of day if you tried. He's a stubborn little shit when he's mad. I'll talk to him. He's more likely to listen to me. I'll make sure he knows he was jumping to conclusions, that I'm the one who dragged you out there to dance, and also that I forced you to wear the perfume. I'll clear everything up, okay? So please, you just cheer up. It would be best if I could tell him myself. But yes, you are right. He would likely not listen to me. He rarely ever listens to me. I should be ashamed. I cannot even hold a simple conversation with my own husband. These things happen, you know. It's not easy being married in a lot of ways. Yes, yes, you're right. I apologize for having you do something so unpleasant. But I would appreciate that. Oh, no, 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 no problem. I'm happy to. No need to apologize. I've got this. 
I'll dunk his head in cold water until he's not blowing steam from his ears anymore. I'll cool him down. Promise. And you never know. Maybe he'll be open to listening. You could be back to the way you were a year ago in no time. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it, madam. Be positive. You look so much better with a smile on your face. All right. Thank you. God, fuck you, Jacopo! I doubt a Jacopo would listen, even coming from Maria. And I imagine the white-haired girl felt much the same way. However, she grabbed onto that sliver of hope. She let herself dream. She let herself believe, even just faintly, that everything would go well. Such is human nature. When uncertainty has you in its clutches, you grasp at whatever hope you can find to keep yourself afloat. That night, she did not sleep. She was afraid that even in her dreams, Jacopo would be shouting at her. She felt as though her memories of a year prior would begin to crumble away. Jacopo's a dick. That is still some weird noises. <sighs> right. <clears throat> now we're back here again. The next morning, Jacopo stood alone in the den by the billiards table. He appeared to be rather agitated. His face was twisted into a frown, his pointer finger tapping restlessly against the hard surface of the table. Evidently, no longer able to stay in one place, he paced a circle around the table, then swiped up a racket to cue, setting up a game of nine ball. I am not intimately familiar with the ways by which men entertain themselves, but in truth I was bewitched by the sight of him leaning over the table. It almost seemed as though a steel rod ran straight from his shoulder to the tip of his outstretched finger, upon which the cue was secured by another finger looped over it. With a smooth, flowing motion, he thrust the cue forward slightly, pulling it back and repeating the process once more before ramming it into the cue ball, sending it rolling into the diamond of colored balls. A chorus of clicks and clacks emanated from the center of the room. Balls collided with one another and ricocheted off the cushioned walls, a few landing in the pockets situated around the edge of the table. Jacopo appeared to have accomplished this with little trouble, but I imagine merely striking the cue ball with the stick would be rather difficult for someone inexperienced. But despite his accomplishment, it seemed to only exacerbate his agitation. Lousy positioning, he muttered, though I hadn't the fight faintest idea what he was talking about. What should have been a game for his enjoyment, he went about with a constant look of exasperation. I suspect he was using it as a way to blow off steam, and as a result, the tension in the air was palpable. I felt it would be improper to intrude upon him, even considering my distaste for the man. There was an, <clears throat> there was an undeniable beauty in every motion he made every perfectly audible clack of billiard balls bouncing off one another. It was an enchanting sight, but then someone without the slightest regard of or appreciation for beauty came marching in with a hammer to shatter it like glass. Gotta say, that was impressive. <clears throat> a man leaned against the frame of the open door. He was neither a resident nor worker of the mansion. The man's face was covered in scraggly stubble, his body draped in grime-caked garments. His eyes were sunken so deep it was as though I was looking at a fleshless skull, though there were as a feral glimmer in them. Needless to say, he was not prim and proper. How long have you been there? Okay. <clears throat> we need to give this guy a dick voice. An asshole, an asshole voice. Uh, I don't even think I can even pull that off. Not long, but man, I can't help laughing. You were completely in your own world there. What do you want? And why didn't you send a maid for me? Don't be such a hard ass. We ain't strangers, man. Tamos Tamaso. Why should family have to go to the maids to see you? That just ain't right, brother. Your door should always be open for family. Enough. I am not your family. We're bound by something even stronger than blood. By our family, our Koska. Don't! You only ever bring up the Koska when it's in your interest. <laughs> oh, scary! Come on now, what happened to you, little Jack? 
Where'd the little boy used to call me Uncle Tommy go? Don't you dare use that godforsaken name. Get the hell out of my sight. What in God's name are you doing here? The man hailed from the same country as Jacopo. They had a peculiar relationship, though they were not blood-related. He referred to Jacopo as family. They came from a sunny island in the Mediterranean Sea, a place of many unique customs and an underground society. Costco was a word that originated from and referred to those underworld families. Ah! So basically the Yakuza, or just, you know, mob. It would be another 30 or so years before organizations like theirs received much public attention. At the time, they were not widely known. It's a short step into the future, and they would grow so powerful the very mention of them would send a chill through the room. Okay, so literally the Yakuza? Hey now, that's no way to talk to a fellow Berzati. Berzati? You're on the short list to become the next Kappa Famig... Kappa... 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 I'm gonna have a stroke if I keep trying to pronounce that. Capo. We respect our brothers. That's how we operate. I could go home and say you threw me out of your house. How'd you like those rumors to spread? The soon-to-be Capo wouldn't even listen to a little request. I very much doubt anything you said could damage my reputation. I ain't been exiled yet. And as long as I'm still one of them, they won't ignore me. Oh, that's some mighty fine looking whiskey you got there. Don't mind if I do. Nothing here is for you to drink. Booze is my lifeblood, man. No love for a brother. You worthless leech. It surely won't be long before you find yourself in exile. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to get off the hook with just exile, that is. A child could snap that scrawny neck of yours. If I'm gonna go, I'd rather go tied up, tortured for days, and covered in tiny little cuts from head to toe. You sick bastard! You disgust me! Call me a carnal adventurer. I despise the mundane. Last thing I want is to go all out like a wet fart. Ew! Is this what you came for? To waste my time with your insipid nonsense? Oh, hardly. Surely you have an idea what I'm here for. And how much I need. <laughs> you damned maggot. A worthless leech, a sick bastard, and a damned maggot. <laughs> what are the names you got up your sleeve for me? You son of a... Do you honestly think this is how you ask for a favor? Whoops, excuse me. I beg of thee, O oh esteemed future capo. I'm done broke! I'm bone broke! Not even enough money, I'd put bread on the table. Could you spare a little for our brother? You brought this on yourself, I'm sure. I hear more than enough stories about you, and hardly any of them pleasant. Drinking, gambling, debauchery. I'm humiliated I'm humiliated to be in the same Costco as you. You wanna make money playing? You gotta learn the game first. Says the worm who played himself into oblivion. Now, do you honestly believe I'll give you anything? Oh, but you will. You got no choice. Costco rules. You're required to help a fellow countryman. Especially considering how few of us there are stranded on this colossal landmass. Blackmailing him, huh? You won't even notice the money's missing. It ain't because you can't, but because you don't wanna. But Jacopo, being a tight ass does nothing for you. Me coming to you for help keeps your god your good name clean. That's the thing about being boss. You quietly keep little shits like me out of trouble. So that trouble don't come raining back on you. Hm. You do not seem to understand your place. Rather than lecturing me, you should be on your hands and knees begging and crying for my help. If that's what you want, I'll gladly comply. Happy to kiss your boots while I'm at it. Don't even think about it. Know this, there won't be a second time. I will be reporting your conduct to the family back home. I look forward to seeing how they deal with you. <laughs> Just try to have a little mercy, would ya? Hey, hey, is there a maid around? It doesn't matter who. How may I serve you, master? Get a single stack from this safe. Here's the key. It goes without saying, but don't touch anything else. Give the money to that man. 
as you're escorting him out the door. As you wish. Is that all you needed? Yes, now get to it. Very well. Excuse me. Well, well, that's one look of a mage you got there. But there's something, I don't know, eerie, strange about her. I don't know, I think she's a beautiful woman. Regardless if she's a demon or a witch or something like that, I don't care. Fancy that, we agree on something. How long she been working here? Couldn't tell you. As I recall, she came with the house. Is that the kind of woman you fancy? A gal you can't read will always be interesting. Is that so? Now that he mentions it, how old is that one? Though I suppose it doesn't much matter. Oh yeah, Jacopo! One other thing I wanted to talk to you about. What is it this time? And if it's more of your blather, I will shoot you dead where you stand. No, no, no need for threats. This one's about your, uh, better half. What about my wife? Well, uh, to put it simply, yeah. She came to me asking for advice, looking a little distressed. My wife asked you for advice? Yep. From the sounds of it, you're pretty rough on the little lady. That just ain't right, man. You managed to snag yourself a broad that pretty? You ought to treat her at least a little better, you hear? She looks good with a smile. You gotta make her show it to you every once in a while. Why would she come to you about that? Don't ask me. Maybe she ain't got no one else to talk to. And you know, for whatever it's worth, I am part of the same Koska. Guessing she thought I'd get through to you easier. Really? You just have to put a little more thought into how you act around her, and she'll be smiling for you like always. Oh yeah, I just got the thing. Women love this stuff. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Is that perfume? Haven't you heard? Everyone's talking about it. I'm a big fan of the stuff too. Smells great. Pretty girl smells like you wearing some of this. Any man would be in love in an instant. You've never given her nothing fashionable before, have you? May look just like scented water, but he can't let that fool you. Go on, give it to her. You like a nice smelling lady too, don't you? Little bit of scent can give a different flavor to your nighttime excitement. <laughs> Vanilla. Well, I've said my piece or I'll be taking my leave. Don't want to keep your maid waiting too long and get on her bad side. D Hold on, Tommaso. Why would she... Make it last. That's all the advice your Uncle Tommy has for you. Ciao! W wait! Tommaso! What the hell? Why do I think Tommaso and Maria are the same person? I could go after him. It would be a simple task to catch him, grab him by the neck, make him tell me. Tell me where he spoke with her and what she told him. But why? Why will my legs not move? Asking him for advice. Fashionable perfume. Her smile. She looks good with a smile. She'll be smiling for you like always. That can't be. She hardly ever smiles around me. But she'll... She'll smile for him? Last night, when she was short of breath, having such a grand time wearing that perfume, getting ready to leave the house. Just who was that smile for? God damn it! Don't you think I'll let you run free any longer? Oh, god damn it. I suddenly went gangster there for a moment. His eyebrows were furrowed, creating deep creases on his forehead. Several servants stood off to the side, watching their master attentively as he stomped past them down the corridor. However, no one said a word to him. Had I not been preoccupied and turned to his countryman, I likely could have prevented it. The look on his face would have made it obvious something bad was about to happen. Oh, God. He's, he's probably immediately going to assume that she, that she cheated on him with Tommaso. Something that would serve only to further her misfortune. She was already in a less than an ideal situation, and it was perched on the edge of a hill, soon to begin rolling down into even worse territory. Okay, I'm taking a drink for this one. Because this shit's gonna hit the fan. And I'm kinda scared for what's about to happen. Alright! Let the misfortune begin. 
Jacopo? What's the matter? If you wanted to visit, you could have said something, rather than coming in without knocking. Is that really necessary? Pardon? What the fuck?! Looking a little bit like freaking... You look like a really demented Yukimasa, what the shit?! Is there something you so desperately want to keep from me that I must knock before entering, that I should have to let you know in advance that I'm coming? But what what are you... Well, is there? You want to talk to him behind my back, I'm told. What'd you tell him? You moaned him about my behavior? Christ, man! That hurts! You told him I'm rough with you. You cry on his shoulder because I'm not nice enough? Him, of all people! Jesus Christ! Wait, Jacopo! You're mistaken, Lemmy! Silence! Not a word! Not a single godforsaken word! The only thing that comes out of your mouth is excuses! Lies and fabrication! You put on this sweet and innocent girl, little girl act, but what's really going through your head? Maybe I should just rip that mask off your face! S stop Jacopo! Christ! You look down on me! Your nobility! And I'm just a nobody who married into it! N no stop! Let go of me, please! When did it start? How long have you been seeing him? Who else have you been seeing? Covering yourself in fashionable perfume and smiling, even though you'd never smile around me! Please let me go! I can see it in your eyes. He's just a worthless commoner! Why would you think that? Why will you not listen to me? Silence! Ah, oh, God, I can't even do that. Silence! It's all your fault. Every last thing. And I tell you not to leave the house, but you do. I tell you to do as I say, but you ignore me. Every last thing you do drives me mad. I don't have time right now to deal with this, to rack my mind over you, over a woman. I don't have time for it. Why do you not do as I say? <laughs> do you not have enough already, huh? Will you not be satisfied until you've taken even my arms and legs? I've given you money, clothing, everything. You have an incredible life. Look around you. That life of luxury you and your parents wanted. It's right here. You have it. What more could you possibly want? Why do you insist on being unfaithful? D unfaithful? You think that what I'm doing is unfaithful to you? How else should I describe it? You leave your room despite my ordering you not to. Don't think I don't know. When you came to the den the other day, you had your eyes on the other men. No, I did not. I had no such inclination. Enough. Not another word from you. I have no interest in your excuses. If that's how you're going to act, then say goodbye to your freedom. You're forbidden from leaving the mansion, or your room for that matter, or even speaking to the servants. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll make you a new room. Too many people come in and out of this one. It'll be somewhere quieter, out of the way. You like the garden? How about I put it there? If you leave that room without my permission, this time, I'll kill you! Fuck! Why? Why will you not listen to me? Jacopo, the master of the house, likely loved the white-haired girl. That is what I saw in their exchange. Normally, love is supposed to be a sweet and warm, e wonderful emotion. It makes you care for, value that person even more than yourself. But it was the exact opposite for him. I never knew that love could be such a painful thing. How did his love end up so twisted? What did he expect to happen by confining and abusing the woman he loved? Perhaps she was conscious of that. To be human is to sometimes find oneself driven by uncontrollable internal impulses. A few days later, Jacopo dragged the white-haired girl from her chamber and led her outside. The garden she had once loved was now a thing of the past. It had become a dreary space. Mary arose in sight, and being taken there did nothing to improve her mood, only sadden her further. The cold gray piles of, me gray piles of metal freckling the barren earth seemed to mock her. Her husband led her, the lady of the house, to a shed that had been repurposed into a spartan living area. She begged and pleaded, but Jacopo would not have it. He shoved her into the sad little shack and locked the door. Well, fuck that guy!
dude's a prick. <sighs> how... How did things end up this way? Why? All I wanted was to go back to the way things used to be. For us to be able to smile around each other. It had been several days since Jacopo had locked her in the shed, and her day-to-day -day life was only growing more arduous. She was under constant surveillance. The door was only unlocked to deliver her meals three times a day. And despite what an unfortunate situation the employer's wife found herself in, the maid chattered and gossiped and giggled freely. Oh my god! Not even in the shadows, out of her presence, the tactless young maidservants whispered directly to the white-haired girl when they brought her meals. Look at you, madam, caged away like cattle. I could almost hear the sound of cracks forming in her heart. I imagine she got to the point where she was having difficulty merely holding herself together. She had done nothing wrong, and yet she was forced to live this life of insults and mockery. Of ridicule. The only reason her, ten tenu ugh, her tenuously held together spirit did not completely shadow was because she still had her one and only ally. The maid, Maria, volunteered to attend to the white-haired girl. Maria took over the duty of delivering her three meals, meaning the other maids stopped coming by, and that relieved the white-haired girl's mental and emotional stress considerably. Maria became her sole conversation partner, her sole companion. She did not leave as soon as meals were finished, instead remaining in the shed with the white-haired girl for some time. So, uh, <clears throat> madam, how about a funny story? I flubbed up pretty hard the other day. You want to hear about that? So, a couple of days back, I didn't get enough sleep in the previous night, right? I'm helping out in the kitchen, half awake, plating up some food. And when I get to bring it out to the guest, my heart about leaps out of my mouth. G guess why? What I thought was a plate was actually an ashtray. Man, I was sweating like a pig. The guest didn't seem to notice, but the other maids were pale as ghosts the entire time. Just about everyone had themselves a case of the vapors. I got quite the tongue lashing at cleanup. <laughs> but pretty funny, huh? Oh, did you? Sounds like it was a pretty bad day. Y yeah. Hey, uh, madam, I know there's not much point in telling you to cheer up right now, but I'm sure he won't keep you locked up forever. He's just a bit crabby for now. It'll be all right. Actually, now that I think about it, there's a mystery to be solved each time. Well, the white-haired girl must not have talked to, um... Uh... Tomosa. What if Maria talked to Demosa? Listen, this story has basically taught me that there's going to be nothing but tragedy in this. What if Maria is basically manipulating the entire situation and basically... Basically ruining the white-haired girl's life, basically. Under the guise of being a friend. I mean, for crying out loud, she seemed to be talking to Jacopo rather normally. So... I'm sorry, Maria, I'm placing this suspicion on you. I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I will immediately apologize for that. But I'm not going to eliminate any possibility, okay? Although, I guess is is a bit drastic for a temper tantrum. I'm sorry, madam. If only I had pushed him a bit harder. If only I had a little more influence, you might not be in this situation. I thought I could be of some help, but I guess I'm not doing a great job of that. Of course not, Maria. You absolutely are. Just your being here takes a great weight off my shoulders. Still, though, I feel so worthless. Because I'm just a maid, I can't set you free. It's okay. I'm used to being imprisoned. What? What do you mean you're used to it? He never locked your door before! You're right. I'm not sure why, but I feel as though I have been in a similar predicament before. Lacking freedom and contact with others for a long stretch of time. 
I'm sure it's simply the exhaustion getting to you, madam. No one should ever be used to living like this. Yes, I agree. And I pray things go back to the way they were soon. Has getting mad at him never crossed your mind? Getting mad? Yeah, you know, when he yells, you yell back, let him know he's in the wrong. Never consider doing that? I... I guess you're not one to get angry, madam. Which would mean you're a better fit for the Holy Mother than me. Uh, oh, no. I do... I do sometimes want to get angry. Tell you the truth, it's almost always going through my mind how, if I did raise my voice, perhaps he would listen to what I have to say. But when I'm standing there in front of him and he starts shouting at me, I freeze up and end up not saying a word. I'm just such a pitiful woman. Everything about me. What I need to speak up most to stand up for myself, I cannot. Oh, don't look so down. That's not a bad thing. It, it's, it's, it's got you in a little bit of a pickle right now. But I'll clear everything up with him. You hear me? In my mind, your modesty is a virtue. And the more I think about it, I can't even imagine you screaming. I like you better the way you are. Reserved and ladylike. You can leave all the yelling to me. I'll do whatever I can to help you, madam. Were you able to clear up his confusion about the night when we were dancing? Uh, oh, uh, about that. Sorry, he just wouldn't hear it. I... I see. But I'm not throwing in the towel. I'll keep trying as long as it takes. So... Say, Maria, could I perhaps ask another favor? Huh? Yeah, sure, let me have it. I would like to write him a letter. A letter? To someone who lives in the same house? I yes. As things stand, I simply cannot go visit him on a whim. And I feel as though I could calmly express on paper things I'm unable to say to him face to face. I suspect I might have more luck that way. I also believe he would be more likely to maintain his composure, reading my thoughts in a letter than hearing them from my mouth. With it, I can clear up all the confusion, and things can go back to the way they were. A letter, huh? Interesting. I'll write the letter which I would like you to deliver to him. May I ask that of you? Absolutely! Not a problem! Thank you, Maria. You're the only person I can count on, and I mean that. Part of me really thinks that Maria is kind of manipulating the whole situation. Why? How did this happen? Why would she betray me? I wanted to give her a decently happy life. I didn't want to get violent with her. Yet when I saw her face, when I heard what she had to say, I couldn't restrain myself. I guess when it comes down to it is that, no matter how you dress it up, I am still a Berzati. There was never any way for this bloodline to give that girl happiness. God damn it! Why am I fretting over this nonsense? And I'm supposed to be the future, head. Huh. You're a dick! An illusion. But they're dancing, they really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion and not something else? To me, it does not seem so, to be... I cannot see it as anything as but two tiny people dancing. That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Ah, oh, you're right. That's a shame. I didn't think you actually would. But it's the most precious thing. <laughs> they look as though they're dancing atop my palm. It's almost frightening how much innocence rests within those hands. It's as if they've been completely cut off from the world's filth. My hands, however, are soaked in blood. I fear that bringing her into my world may taint her. Am I capable of protecting this woman's purity? And yet, as I watched her so joyously playing, I felt as though I had gotten close to her. I was the one being a child that day. Jacopo, it's me, Maria. Is it alright if I come in? Ah, ugh, Maria. It's fine, come in. Alrighty. Color me surprised. I didn't think you'd let me in. Have I ever denied you access to my room? 
No, but you've been looking pretty glum lately. I've never exactly been a cheery man. <laughs> True enough. I know you told me before, before not to talk about your wife, but I'm going to stick my nose where it doesn't belong today. There's been a lot of chatter among the maids lately about you getting rough with her. I mean, you've got the poor thing locked up in a shed outside. You're not leaving the best impression on anyone. You here to box my ears? I don't know, Fitty Fitty. The other half is, I'm concerned about you. I know you're not the kind of man to threaten someone without a good reason. You're not. I thought you were friends with her. I am. And it hurts seeing her in so much pain. Then why has that not changed the way you act around me? I would think you'd be scorning me with the rest of the maids. Though no, I see how it is. You don't trust me. We've known each other for so long. This isn't a question of whose side I'm on. You're in pain too. I can see that. You always bottle things up. Kept them hidden. You're too proud to rely on others. But you should probably vent to someone before it reaches the point where you can no longer you no longer can. Say, Jacopo, do you remember the promise we made a while back? Uh how far back? Back when you were still shorter than me. You were fourteen and I was twelve. I had to leave town and you came to see me off. Quite frankly, I didn't think you'd come. I was surprised even if I didn't show it. Okay. Flashback! Jacopo? Where's your dad? Or are you here alone? He didn't even tell me. Uh. There's no reason you have to leave town. My old man says the champ Champanelles have more power. I should be the one leaving. It's not that simple. Grown-ups have a lot to consider. So don't give me that look, Jacopo. We we were kids, but we were both kind of we both we both kind of started to catch on to the situation with our families and to the bonds that land held on us. Although we didn't know any of the details at the time, my grandpa owned all the land the city was built on, but he was a very conservative man. He didn't try to spread his influence, instead opting to fortify what he already had. I don't know exactly when it first started, but organizations were used to administrate cities. And when we were kids, my dad was the capo, and my grandpa, his consigl... Capo... Ca, capo Familia. Capo Familia. Wait, Capo Familia. There we go. Capo Familia and my grandpa, his conciliar. God, those are weird fucking words. But just because he was an advisor didn't mean he was powerless. While my dad made the decisions, my grandpa was the only one allowed to fight him on them. Your father was a Capo de Sina that served under my dad. He wasn't especially happy about it. But parents quarreling doesn't affect their kids, or at least that's what I thought at the time, and what you probably thought too. But there was still a chance we could be caught in the crossfire, so my dad decided to send me and my mom away. Off the island and to the north where were, were some more prosperous areas. He thought that by sending us there, we could live our lives clean, regardless of where we came from. There's no changing what's in your blood, though. You could have told me, too. Or are you planning on leaving without saying anything? No, it was just all decided so quickly. Why do you sound so accepting? Adults have a lot to consider. You bet they do. But you could at least let them know you're opposed to it, Maria. But no, your tail went straight between your legs as soon as you were told. You just gave up and accepted it straight away. I thought you were better than that. You... you think? You think I don't know that? But I'll just be in my dad's way if I say... stay. I'm a kid. A girl. I wouldn't be of any help if something happened. And I don't want need to need someone to protect me. I've never once thought of you as a girl. Hey, now, that's mean! Oh, jeez. Thanks, Jacopo. Now you're getting me all mushy, too. If anyone should be sad here, it's me. I am not sad. Oh, really? You sure you're not actually torn that I won't be around anymore? You're a huge crybaby after all, Jacopino. Hey, when have I ever cried? And don't call me that. <laughs> I made you mad. Short fuse as ever, I see. You've got to learn to keep your head. You're a man, an heir to the Berzati family. Hmm, don't you lecture me. <sighs> so pig-headed. You could at least listen to me this once before I'm gone. Hey, Maria. Got a little time to spare? 
Uh, yeah, sure, but not much. The carriage is gonna be here soon. Do you have enough for a trip to the hill and back? Yeah, I should have time for that. Because of our families, we weren't really able to get along with the other kids in the city, so we played a lot at the top of, the, of that hill. It became kind of like our little secret lair. There was an abandoned house up there. I guess an old farmhouse or something, and kids love that sort of thing, you know? We called it Casa Nostra, our home, and we pretended it was actually ours. We drew circles on the wall in chalk and used it for target practice. We brought up a bale of straw and used it to make makeshift beds. When either of us got into fights with our parents, we'd stay the night here instead of home. In retrospect, I'm sure they knew where we were going and just let us do our thing. Oh yeah, there was this one time we were playing and a huge storm rolled in, trapping us up there. The wind wasn't just howling, it was screaming bloody murder. It was blowing so hard I thought the house might fly away. As I recall, you were crying that night. Hey, Nero, you came, you came, you're here to see me off too? Ah, there you go, wagging your tail, that dumb look on your face. You have no idea what's going on, do you? It wasn't just the two of us who had made Casa Nostra our home base, though. There was one more. A stray black dog. I'm pretty sure it didn't have actual black fur, though, and it was just really, really dirty. Of course he doesn't. He's a stupid animal. Oh, don't talk about him like that. He's one of us. What were you planning to do about Nero? You just leave him behind? Mm, nothing else I can do. Can't bring a dog in the carriage. Besides, you're here, so it'll be fine. You take care of Nero, alright? He doesn't like me. You're the only one who can take care of him. Maybe so, but I'm not coming back. He'll starve to death if you don't figure something out. He's a puny runt. I doubt he could win in a fight for scraps. Come on, do it for me. You said you won't be coming back? Did you mean that? Are you absolutely never returning to this town? There's no telling what may or may not happen, so it's best not to get your hopes up. Better than the pain of getting let down. Well, <laughs> I've turned into quite the cynic, huh? Maybe if I'd been born into a nor more normal family, I'd be in my room in a pile of dolls right about now, my head in the clouds. I can't imagine you doing that, nor do I think that's normal. <laughs> well said. Hey, stop that, Nero. Quit licking me. <laughs> that tickles and you reek. Maria. Hmm? What is it? Come back. I don't care if you know, don't know when it'll be. Just don't say you'll never return. No one knows how things are going to end up. Maybe my old man will gain more power, maybe yours will. If things continue as they are, it'll be your old man. And then down the line, I'll work in service of the Champanella family. Campanella family. And that's just fine by me. But even if that's not the future that lies ahead, I promise I will make a place for you. So, Maria? Question. Do you have a crush on me? What? <laughs> kidding, I'm just kidding. No need for a, a, a conniption fit. Ah, it just gives me conniptions. I was just playing around. Here I am trying to have a serious conversation and then you... Uh, listen to me. I don't have any of those, you know, those kind of feelings for you. I consider you a lifelong friend, my one and only friend. That's why I came to see you off, and that's why I'm telling you this now. Whether you're a girl or a boy is irrelevant. Friendship lasts much longer than something so fanciful as romance, am I wrong? <laughs> don't laugh, dammit! It's humiliating! I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because I agree entirely. Yeah, we've always been on the same page, Jacopo. Maybe we did fight a lot, but there wasn't one we didn't get through. No one else understood just how lonely it was wearing a mask for all the other kids, trying to fit into their happy little circle. We couldn't afford to be found out after all. Neither of us had any real allies. Except for each other, of course. Nope. I'm glad I got the chance to play with you. If you hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have been I wouldn't have bothered caring for Nero either. It was too funny watching him chase you around. You're a sick girl, Maria. <laughs> so hey, Jacopo, this place will still be Casa Nostra even after I leave, right? You won't do anything to it, will you? Of course not. This is our home. That was always the plan. Right. Thanks. And though you know, you being all nice is kind of creepy, Jacopo. It's not going to start snowing, is it? How rude! <laughs> well, if you're going to be like that, I'm not sure I want to give it to you. Huh? Give what? A present? 
You should have said so sooner. Gimme, gimme. You don't have a shred of tact, do you? What's it matter? Come on, what'd you bring? Let me have it, soldier. Oh, Maria. Consider this a temporary potting gift. You'd been wanting one of these for a while. Ooh, is that a cartridge? From a Colt Navy? No way, did you swipe it? I'll probably cut, catch hell for it, too. Wow, wow, this is amazing. I always want to get my hands on the real thing. This is from the one hanging up in your house, isn't it? The one your dad was bragging about? They just started selling them this year, and it's ridiculously hard to get your hands on one, or so I hear. Man, guns from the new world are something else, all right. I just imagine the moment the hammer comes crashing down the back of this and it's chilled down my spine. Are you sure you're a girl going crazy over a bullet cartridge? What's the big deal? I like what I like. You'll get in trouble if you don't put this back, though, won't you? Good lord. Don't worry, I'll return it when you return. And I won't tell anyone I gave it to you. Okay. Well, I guess I'll take you up on that, then. Thanks, Jacopo. It'll be my treasure. This goes without saying, but don't you lose it. I'm giving it to you as a symbol of our friendship. No matter how far apart we may be, or how much time may pass, or how things play out with our families, we will always be friends. That cartridge symbolizes that promise. It's a promise, Jacopo. Our families may outwardly hate each other, but I'll always be your friend. Always be on your side. And don't you ever go back on those words. I swear upon this glorious cartridge, this historic land, and the names of my ancestors, I shall not make myself a liar. I trust you, Maria. We'll meet again. It may be many years from now, but that won't change a thing. Our friendship will never fade. Ugh. God, you were adorable back then. And short to boot. But now you've hardened so much. I was flabbergasted when I next saw you. Dressed all fancy from head to toe, you'd become quite the smug little bastard, I thought. You sure weren't that... You sure weren't that little kid anymore. You, you have quite the memory. Well, yeah, I don't forget my promises. And I'd never forget that I said I'd always be on your side. The question is, did you remember? I did. I remember every word you said that day. And as I said, I left Casa Nostra as it was. Although it is quite some distance away now. I imagine if we went back and did a little work on it, we could have it looking just like old times. And Nero? He... About a year after you left, he suddenly disappeared. And just for the record, I did take care of him, as you told me. I'm guessing he got in a fight with another stray or something. I searched, but could never find him. Ah, well. It has been more than a decade. Not everything is going to be exactly the same. You, however, you haven't changed a bit from the girl you were all those years ago. Neither of you. Sure, you seem different on the outside, but at your core, I believe you haven't changed at all. Still the same old Jacopino. Could you not call me that? <laughs> I have changed quite a bit. Unlike you, and I am well aware of it. Say, uh, Jacopo? Do you consider me supportive? Of everything you could have said? Of course you are. You're constantly supporting me, past and present. You're proof of the existence of a kind of friendship that can transcend gender, blood, or, and any other such distinctions. You know, it's kind of, honestly kind of bizarre seeing you without a stick up your ass. Wow. Harsh words. <laughs> Come on now, hear me out! You old Tommy blushing there! Anyway, before you put that stick back up there, tell me something. Am I still your only ally? You are. Of everyone in this mansion, I'm the only one? Yes. If she would at least have a little more. The madam? I didn't actually intend to treat her like that. Believe me, Jacopo, I know. I mean, from a girl's perspective, what you did is pretty awful. But hey, I'm not a girl, according to you, anyway. I will... I will always be on your side, no matter what. God, I feel as though I'm being consoled. Hmm? That's what I was going for. I should have never opened up to you. <laughs> uh. Hmm? 
hey, uh, now is probably not the best time to bring this up, but I have a letter. A letter? Written by the madam, here. A letter from my wife? Let me see it. <laughs> what the hell am I reading? I was considering keeping it a secret, but having seen it, I thought hiding it from you might only hurt you more, so... I decided it was best to show you. Who is this? Who is this letter for? It's as if... but... that can't. I love you. Who is she writing to? I... I don't know this man! Take a deep breath, Jacopo, and listen to me. The madam is having it... Oh my god! I fucking called it! I fucking called it! Oh, Maria, you evil little harlequin. This was all your plan, I see. <laughs> I fucking called it! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! She was playing devil's advocate. She was lying. I fucking knew it! And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to end it there, because time-wise, I don't really have enough time to continue it. But, ooh, what the? Maria Campanella. Oh. But, oh my god, I fucking called it! I fucking called it! Eesh. I'm getting good at- okay. Okay, I was actually, I think I was actually, I don't know, was I able to solve this one before the, actually, yeah, I'm surprised. The first two, I could not solve the mystery whatsoever, what, just at all. But this one, yes, my paranoia kicked in, and it was right. Maria, you evil little harlequin, I was right about you. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know, there's this weird sense of satisfaction that kind of activates whenever you have, like, a theory and then suddenly, BOOM, it's proved! Kind of. Okay, so, my theory here is, I think, I think now that this has been basically confirmed, this can actually add on to my original theory. She must have been the one who was basically telling Tomosa about how she was feeling and all that, and all the per- I mean, the perfume just- I mean, it, se it seems kind of weird, like, we didn't have a scene where the white-haired girl was talking to Tomosa. So how the hell would Tomosa know about the perfume, about the smile, about everything? It just seemed too perfect. It seems like Maria is obviously- she's always been this dude's ally, but she's completely trying to destroy this relationship that they have. Specifically, I think because of pure jealousy, or the other theory I have is that technically they were different sects of a family, basically. They're par apparently they were both from families, obviously, that hate each other, right? Well, what if this is basically an entire covert operation that Maria has been doing to basically overthrow Jacopo, possibly? Which means that, oh my god, Maria's been playing... She's been the puppet master this whole time. Eww, that's so good! I mean, that's kind of tragic as fuck, but I'm glad I'm actually able to figure this stuff... I'm actually glad I got this, I hope. If I didn't, feel free to laugh at me in the comment section. But, oh my god! Ugh, I can't wait for the next... Oh my god, I have an entire week before I'm allowed to record more... No! Ah! Anyway, okay, okay, I need to calm down a little bit. Oh my god, I freaking love this novel! Oh, it's so good! Oh my god, why haven't I started this before? This is so good. But, um, anyway, that's what I'm going to have to... I literally, at time-wise, I literally have to end it right now. I just had a very long work day. But anyway, if you guys like this, be sure to let me know. My apologies if I deep... if I was, uh... Geeking out a little bit too much, but I was enjoying myself. I probably sound like a total raving lunatic at the end. <sighs> But if you guys listen, you probably guys, you guys probably think I'm a raving lunatic at this point. In which case, if you guys like this, be sure to let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Yes, I switched to that voice to end this one.